This video will demonstrate how to use the WinLoad feature of the Load Helper by way of an example project. Let's get started. In this example, we will determine the wind loads on a rigid structure. The basic wind speed at the site location is 115 miles per hour, and the site elevation is 2,000 feet above sea level. Looking at the elevation, we see that the building has six 10-foot stories with a flat roof and has an escarpment on the south side of the structure. Looking at the plan view, we see that the structure is 50 feet in the north-south direction by 100 feet in the east-west direction. The upwind exposure and the total area of openings vary for each side of the structure. In the load helper, wind loads are calculated using the directional procedure for buildings of all heights according to ASCE 7 standard. To determine the loads on our structure, we'll simply work through the tabs on the left from top to bottom, inputting the required information for our structure and site. In the Site Information tab, we'll specify the basic wind speed, leave the directional factor set to 0.85, input the site elevation, and let the program calculate the ground elevation factor, Ke. In the Building Information tab, we will set the north, south, and east, west plan dimensions and the mean roof height. Note, you can view the building definitions to make sure you input the building dimensions correctly. Next, we can define the story levels. We will set the number of stories to 6, and we see that the 10-foot default height of each story is correct for our case. If you have a flexible structure and the distance between the elastic shear center and the center of mass is different, you can set the value of ER for each story in each direction. Since these values are only used for calculations for flexible structures, we will leave them set to zero since our structure is assumed to be rigid. Note, there is an option to include the force at the ground level in the calculation of the base shear, which we will not do for our case. Moving on to the enclosure tab, we can choose to manually specify the enclosure for each wall when it receives positive pressure, or we can set the enclosure mode to calculate and specify the gross area of each wall, AG, and the total area of the openings in each wall, AO, and allow the program to automatically determine the enclosure for each wall. Next, we can choose to ignore the reduction factor for large volume buildings. If, however, you have a building with a single, unpartitioned large opening, the program has the ability to calculate the RI factor. Moving on to the direction data, we'll set the upwind exposure for the north, south, east, and west faces of the structure, and we will assume that this structure is rigid in each direction. Next, instead of using the default gust factor of 0.85 for a rigid structure, we will let the program calculate the value according to the ASCE 7 standard. For the south side of the structure, let's set the topographic factor KZT to calculate. We'll then choose a 2D escarpment hill type and set the height and length of the escarpment and set the distance from the crest of the building using a positive value for X since we are downwind of the crest. Moving on to the roof pressure coefficients, we can set the number of regions for the structure in each direction and specify the pressure coefficient for each region. Consulting the figure in the ASCE 7 standard, this structure will have two regions in the north-south direction and three regions in the east-west direction, and we can enter the values for each region. Next, looking at the pressure coefficients tab, we can see the calculated gust factors for the rigid structure in each direction. Also, we can see the external wall pressure coefficients that are generated for each direction. Based on the area of openings that we input, the enclosure is classified for each side of the structure when it receives positive external pressure, and the corresponding internal pressure coefficient is shown. Finally, we see that the external roof pressure coefficients that we input are repeated here for convenience. Moving on to the wind pressure tab, we can see the wind pressures on the structure when each of the north, south, east, or west walls receive a positive external pressure. At the top, the K factors are shown, followed by the windward wall pressure calculations, with the pressures varying along the height of the structure. Values for both positive and negative internal pressures are shown. 
At the bottom, the leeward, side, and roof pressures are also shown. Moving on to the Story Force tab, we can see the wind pressures on the structure when each north, south, east, or west wall receives a positive external pressure. For each side, the eccentricities are shown along with the forces and torsional moments on each level of the building for each design wind load case outlined in the ASCE 7 standard. The minimum wind load is also shown at each building level. Finally, switching to the base shear tab, we can see the base shears on the structure when each north, south, east, or west wall receives a positive external wind pressure for each design wind load case. After completing the wind load calculations for the structure, we can switch to the report tab and select the information that we want to include in the report to document our work. In just a few minutes, we have used the Load Helper program to determine the wind loads on a structure according to the ASCE 7 standard. We hope you find this program useful in determining wind loads for your various structures. Thanks for watching and have a great day.